where Jesus takes his disciples up onto this mountaintop experience where they too experience the light of the world because it's exactly what they needed right then and right there. So they were heading up the mountain. It was a big mountain. It said that it's Mount Hernan. In that vicinity, Mount Hernan goes 9,000 feet up into the heavens. It was no small thing. It was that mountain that they hiked up into, a high mountain. It would have been a challenge after having walked through the day, perhaps then, quite a distance that they had come. And then they hike up this mountain. And it was a mountain that would have taken their breath away in a lot of different ways. A mountain that stretched now to touch the heavens itself. Maybe they were even griping along the way. <laughs> I know that that's how it was for me in times when my older brother would take me hiking and we're going to go up that mountain right there. And from down in the valley, it looked like a beautiful thing until you start going up the mountain and you realize, boy, I don't know if I can make this one and your breath goes away. I can just kind of hear the conversation because it's what disciples have now with Jesus. When Jesus asks us to go up a mountain, when Jesus asks you to do something challenging and beyond what you think you could ever do, we will sometimes complain to the Lord about, I don't know about this. Are you sure, good Lord? I've been reading through a book written by Barbara Bradley Haggerty. It's her book called The Fingerprints of God, and it intrigued me just the title. I thought, The Fingerprints of God. It's her trek in her own personal journey in life to, to discern and to discover the reality of God in our world and where do we know God and how do we know that it is so that there is a God even. She even asks that question. Though from her childhood she was born into and reared into a family of faith, Barbara still came then to that place that we all really need to come to, asking those questions about the faith where we're challenged and even ask, is God so? Is there a God? And if so, show me. That was her quest in this part of her life, where she had this experience then that brought her to a powerful mountaintop place that she couldn't fully put into words. You see, Barbara is a journalist, and she's one who goes out and interviews people in all conditions and places in the world and in life, and she's one who has to have a reality about her to be able to touch and feel and see and know with her own eyes and see evidence that's there. And so she went out onto a journalistic quest then to know what does this experience that I have had, which was an out of this world, even out of this body experience that God gifted her one day in her life, where she was lifted beyond an illness that she had right in the midst of when her own body was in a place of sickness and illness. And God lifted her up out of that place into a place where, where she witnessed then a brightness, God all around her. And then she said it was as though God was inside of her, in her very being, shining out from inside. It was a powerful, mighty experience of God himself. That's what she was convinced of. but. How do you ever share such a story with others? How can I ever share with anyone else about the experience that I had? They might think I'm a bit out of my mind, a bit crazy, a bit out of touch with reality here in the kind of a world that she circulated in. You don't just come out with these kind of accounts about, about supernatural encounters of the divine where people will look at you sideways and wonder if you are really well in your own being and self and then start discounting everything else that you ever would say as a journalist. People would, wouldn't take me serious anymore, she was concerned about, so she went on a trek, interviewing and talking with others who had such encounters in life, realizing what she was doing was looking for the fingerprints of God, evidence of God, evidence of where God is and has been, and the power of God in people's lives, of all walks, of all places, of all faiths, of those who profess the faith, as well as those who say that they've never believed at all that there was a God, but then they had this mighty, powerful experience, inexplicable, couldn't put it into words, but it stirred in their soul so much that their lives were forever changed. 
They experienced themselves as being transformed, but they had no words to express it. No words of faith, anyway. No religious tradition out of which they came to say what it was. But they knew that it was divine. And it shifted everything in their lives. Barbara began encountering and talking with others. She had an experience then as well where she went into Arizona, into the Navajo Nation. And there she experienced with the Navajos their ritual, their tradition. It was, it was a religious holy experience that she observed and watched others in the midst of. And she said it was even something there, that it was like it would open up the doorway or gateway in people's minds to have an encounter with the holiness of God. Maybe that's too why Jesus said, we're going up a mountain today, boys, and we're going to do some hiking to get them to that place where they would come out of their own body in a way, come out of their own strict constrictions of their own self in a way they could step outside. We need ways in which we can help ourselves to do that, outside of our own flesh even then where we experience sometimes the ways that our flesh has limits. And only until we come to that place where we find we're at our limit, maybe then that's the only time we can extend beyond it, is when we experience it, hitting that wall, hitting that place where I don't know I can go there. I'm pushing myself all the way to this edge. It seems as though that that's akin then to having this place of a divine encounter. It's when you push yourself or you're in an encounter in a situation that you, on your own doing and being in your own flesh, I can't go another step. I can't do another thing. I can't make this happen anymore. And it's at those moments where it seems as though those who share such experiences of a divine encounter, of a holiness of God dwelling around and within, have that similar pattern of their sharing that they came to the very limits of their own flesh and being. And only then can one encounter the divine, the experience of outside of one's body and self and worldliness. It was a short time ago that Allie, our, my youngest daughter and I were out on a, on a bike ride. We were bicycling and, and we were on a longer kind of a ride together, and, and, and we had gone through quite a number of inclines and hills that were taking us up and up, and I was starting to lose breath and thinking, I don't know that I can make this. And I was, I was going up yet another rise of another hill on that bicycle. Down the hill comes this jogger. Uh, she was fresh. She was alive. She was young. And her hair was long, and it was, it was tied in the back, and just kind of bouncing along. And, and there she was, just jogging along, just full of energy and full of life and, and, and all. And here I am just huffing and puffing and trying to make it every way. And, and I could, she was coming up, and, and we were coming closer, and I could see the brightness in her, and there's just the cheer in her. And, and she just says out, isn't it a beautiful, glorious day, she says. And all I could get out, I was just trying to get a breath here, you see. I was just trying to be able to say anything back to her to greet her in some kind of a way. And I couldn't even, all I, all I tried, I just tried to say hello. And all I could get out was the first syllable of hello. And that doesn't go very well. <laughs> but that was the experience of just trying to find the breath and trying to keep on going and keep on going. And, and maybe get to that place where she was at full of energy and, and full of life and, and a euphoric experience of it. And there comes a time when you don't think you can make it. And that is indeed when we have this experience of God surrounding, enfolding, elevating, lifting one up. When you talk with more and more people who have had such divine encounters and encounters of the beyond, and encounters that, that say they were just flooded by the, by the powerful light and, and, and communion of God, of the divine, of some being and something and that which just held me and, and, and cradled me and, and let me know that all is well. All is well. We can make this forward. For when Barbara Haggerty was just interviewing and talking with person after person with the divine encounter, when they reached that wall where they thought they could go no further, over and over again they said things like there was this awareness of an overpowering love 
there's this sense of being one with all a creation. And she said, even though they would be describing this, something that happened five, 10, 20, 30, 50 years ago that happened, it was as though it was happening at the moment again. It was Frederick Beekner, a theologian, a pastor, somebody who would write in books all about all of this divine and all about God and, and, and history and theology, and he would write in his books so much about belief that one day he had a powerful divine encounter. It transported him into another dimension, he said. This person who, who had book knowledge and book study and, and yet he was brought to a new place. It came from grief. A very, very dear friend of his died in his sleep. It was a quiet kind of a death, the kind that any one of us would hope would be ours, and yet it brought such grief to Fred and to all others who were around his good friend because it was so sudden. They didn't get a chance to adjust to it, he said. They didn't get a chance to say goodbye even. It was one day he was alive and we were having fun and we were engaged in life and the next day he was gone. It was a deep grief that held on to him for months that followed. He finally brought himself, he said we must, he said to his wife, go see Martha, his widow. We must at least go to the house even though he thought, what can we say and, and how can we go? But they did. They went there and they spent the night. And when Fred said he was there in the guest room in the night, he was tossing and turning, kind of like a battle that was ensuing and struggling in his very spirit all through the night. And then he looked up and at the foot of his bed, there was a figure there and it was his dear friend. And he said it was the most real experience he said it, 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 it was that he could just reach out and touch him. It was so perfectly real. He would wonder, am I in a dream and I'm in a vision or is this so? But it was so vivid. And he shared with his friend the deep grief. And his friend communicated him in a way that he doesn't know how, whether with his lips or with his spirit. He simply said, all will be well. All will be well. But how do I know, said Fred? How can I really know? Because we live in this place up here, this place of having to know with the mind, of having to have evidence and touch and feel and, and know for sure. And so he picked this, this thread up off from, off from his sweater that, that Fred said his friend always wore this blue sweater with these, these khaki pants and he pulled off a thread there and he said, here, take this. And he threw the thread. Have you ever watched a thread being tossed? It doesn't go far. It just kind of floated out there in the air. And Fred said he just reached out and, and he grabbed it between his thumb and his forefinger and he, and he, and he had this most real sensation this most real experience of a simple thread in his finger. And then the next thing he knew, it was morning. And he was up and he was at the breakfast table with his wife. And he shared with her about this odd dream that he had and the thread. And she said, when I awoke this morning and to come downstairs, there on the carpet at the foot of the bed was such a thread. I know it wasn't there the night when we went to bed, but there it was in the morning. He rushed upstairs, and sure enough, that very thread that he saw, it was there. Fred said, I don't know how all of this works and is, but I know now, I know. Beyond here, he now knew here with a profound experience. It's as though God will give us this glimpse, a glimpse of a new reality and a new life. May we have an experience and a glimpse of beyond ourselves, beyond our human understanding, and into a new realm, the realm of the Almighty God in the name of Jesus the Christ.